The GB News pub is open, it's Talking Pints, and I'm joined by Bilal Stateless Fawaz. <laughs> now, we'll come to the Stateless bit in a minute. Bilal, your story is very pertinent, I think, to what's going on today. Yes. Because we have criminal gangs mm -hmm. who are trafficking people across the English Channel. Uh, some are paying the money up front, others do it and finish up being indebted. Mm -hmm. And for many that come, who perhaps have this dream that somehow the streets are paved with gold in the UK, <laughs> most of them, many of them, will finish up in the illegal economy. That's right. And effectively in some form of modern day slavery. And I want you just briefly to share with the audience, you were trafficked here as a child, Yes, I was trafficked here as a child. I had the assumption that I was coming here to see my dad. I was a kid, and when you're a kid, you're gullible. You're yep. open to certain things that shouldn't be happening. And I got, got and this was here. This was from Nigeria? From Nigeria. Yeah. And I came here, and I was kept in a place where I wasn't allowed to go to school. I wasn't allowed to study or do anything. I just couldn't take it. So I was doing all the things that they asked me to do in the house, and I decided to run out because I have so much passion about my future. I have so much... So what age were you? I was 14. I was 14. And just being kept under house arrest, effectively? Yeah. I was supposed to be kept there for to a work. period of time to work and then maybe taken somewhere else. Which you didn't know? I never knew where. But, but you... I knew something was going on. Yeah. So forced labour, basically. Yeah. And that's the fate, isn't it, of many of the people who it come across the English Channel? It happens. Why don't we talk about this? Because it's... It's a very peculiar topic. No one wants to talk about things that people are doing that will shed a bad light to the public or to an organization. Hence why they put it under wraps. I, I just, I, I find it amazing. I just find this amazing. <laughs> that, 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 that the media, mainstream media, when the subject of modern day slavery comes up, they just sort of look at the floor. Yes. And pretend it's not happening. You've experienced it. Um, and you, and unsurprisingly, you know, once you'd escaped and were taken into care, yes, you sort of got yourself into a few bits of trouble, didn't you? Of course, I was a yeah. kid. I didn't have a mom. I didn't have a father. I, I was looking for guidance. I was looking for belonging. I, lo I was looking for certain family. I was still a kid. I was vulnerable, and I saw the British kids in my school. They were hanging around after school. They were relaxing, and they went out on the streets, and they were playing around, jumping on the bus without ID, without, uh, they call it a card, a bus pass by then. I didn't have money to pay for it. I wasn't allowed to work. So I yeah. jumped on the bus, and I, I did some few things that I wasn't allowed. And when the police come, they all gallivanted around. They all ran away. I, I just stood there like... OK, <laughs> OK, what do you want from me? What do I do? It is interesting, isn't it? Because yeah. you said that in Nigeria, you'd experience real racism. Oh, you have no idea. I am too black to be, I'm too black to be considered white, and I'm too white to be considered black. So when I'm in Nigeria, they say, "Go back to your country." And that is infuriating, because in my soul and my heart, I I belong there. I, I, I was brought up there. So I then realised that I'm not from there based on the, yeah. uh, the decision that the Nigerian embassy did. So, but when you came to this country yeah. and you were out gallivanting <laughs> with the British kids... See, this, this, but this interests me because, because we're going through this revisionism of our history where certain elements in British society want to convince us that we're evil we're awful, we're institutionally <laughs> racist, we're ghastly, we're terrible. What was your experience of coming, living you, in this country? Listen, I tell you, this country is not racist, it's not institutionally, whatever you want to call it. What I tell you, this country has a lot of opportunities. And some people that don't have the capacity to approach that opportunity and grab it while they can, they deem this country to be racist. There's so much opportunity. All you've got to do is just have a belief Figure out a point of target, a goal, and then work towards it. Of course, there's going to be obstacles, boundaries along the way, but it's how you tackle it that makes you stronger for the next huddle. You can't just surrender when things get hard, because that's what a lot of people do. And then they will say, they're racist. 
they're not racist. You just need to do things accordingly in a way where people can perceive you as a hardworking individual. And then doors will open, you know. People say I'm lucky. I say I'm not. The harder I work, the luckier I become. Uh, they are, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I mean, listen, I like that. and, and I like that. And, I'm glad you do. And, and you got yourself straightened out. And you, yeah. decided that, you decided that sport was going to be the big thing. Boxing was going to be the big thing. Yeah. And let's just see a quick, quick clip of you in action. Let's, let's, have, let's have a little look. Let's see. Conscious later, so I'm waiting for you. But we're waiting for you. Waiting for you. So I'm waiting for you. Waiting for you. Waiting for you. I just don't know. Flexing my zone. Flexing my zone. He's fit, this boy. I mean, he's fit. There's no... You want to see my buddy? You want to see him? Do you want to see him? We're before the watershed, but I think we could if you want to. I'll show you. I'll show you. Let's go for it. Wow. Look yeah, at I, that. I mean, who at home could... I mean, I can't compete with that, and I'm not going to. Nah, I promise nah, nah, you. Nah, listen, it's all hard work. I'm telling you. It's all hard work. So bo- let's do the boxing first. Yeah. So what gets you into boxing? Just just the fact you're good at it, or...? No, nah, the thing is... You're natural. I, I have... I wouldn't try to big myself up, but I have the gift of understanding. I, I, you show me something, I will approach it with caution, I will see how it's being done, and I will inject my intuition into it. So whatever I do, I'm always good at it. Whether it's music, whether it's acting, whether it's modeling, whether it's taking instruction, whether it's helping kids, motivational speaking, personal training, or boxing. I just have that fire inside of me that when people want to quit, I don't quit. I, I, I channel that. So when I get in the ring and I'm hitting the bags and I get to the point where I want to stop, that is the part that I dig deepest the most. And where does boxing go for you from here? I mean, because one of your problems is you're still... You know, you've been given... 30 I mean, months. I'm going to say, so, you know, State Les, which is your... Artist mu- name, your, my your music. musical name. My musical name. And we'll come on to that in a moment. Yes. But it's because you have been stateless... That's the that's the whole concept behind it. Yeah, I mean, so you're in a very odd position. Yeah. That Nigeria wouldn't want me. Don't want you. Lebanese don't want me. Lebanese, because through parentage, yeah. don't want you, and we we didn't really want you. And I fought for you. I, mean, <laughs> I, I literally bled for you in the ring. I know. I mean, it's a very bizarre situation. Yeah. So you've now been given leave to remain. For is it thirty months? For thirty months. So yeah, not indefinite leave to not remain. Not indefinite leave. Just leave to remain. Just leave to remain, and and it's it's alarming because that thirty months, when he gets over, I will have to apply for an extension. In the in if there was a situation or an event that they could deport me to Nigeria or take me to Lebanon, then the thirty months is warranted. But if there's no way for them to deport me. Why are they prolonging the inevitable? Because I want to buy a house. I want to build a family. No bank will lend an individual a loan if they know the person has no permanent residency in a country. No, I know. It's a bit of a catch-22. So but, I'm... but through the boxing, I mean, you, you know, you're signed up. You know, you'd be making money. Yeah, I will be. I will be. I'm signed to MTK Global. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for my status in British... Government. So you couldn't do that without leave to remain? I couldn't fight without leave to right. remain. I've so, never worked. Okay, so you've got some bouts ready, mm-hmm. and, you, and you, you're going to make some real money. Oh, you have no idea. You're my next opponent. You better get ready. Okay. Nigel, I'm coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, I tell you what, you've got, he's got even more self-confidence than I've got. This oh, but in boxing, I wouldn't take you on at all. <laughs> so there's a chance now to make some real money and do well. Yeah, yeah there is. But the thing is, um, my river is running dry. I'm not a company that flourishes over time. I'm an organism, as you are, as I am, as we all are. So I am diminishing over time. So if I don't accelerate my process or my opportunity right now, I can't deceive myself. I'm 33 years old. Yeah. So have you survived financially then for the last 10 years or so? Have you managed? Um, I could say I help, I motivate kids. I go to kids' house. I talk to them. I train them, personal training. I do boxing. Um, I do like kind of like talks to young kids. And the parents love it because they see the, the, the spirit uplifted. It, it empowers them because if they see that I can do it and I show the kids the way that never surrender when things get hard, just keep going, keep good going. Message. Nothing good comes easy. If it was good easy, message. everyone would have good it. Good message. Now, so boxing, boxing, you're 33. Yes. So you've got five years? Uh, let's say nine years. 
OK, whatever. But it's not that long. It's not that long. But tell us about your musical career. So I can't speak in boxing. I can only show my talent. But with music, I can speak, I can talk, I can express my emotions. And I've had a love heartbreak, not only in the love part, but also in life. As I've also had a lot of education in this part where life has put me through. So I've been a person that has evaded all obstacles and come out Ooh. victorious. You seem to have been through some pretty horrendous times. Yeah. So. Um, but you've emerged from it with a very positive mental attitude. Who, who, who shouldn't? If you have a calamity or an obstacle or some ev event in your life that is not normal, if you surrender to it, you are surrendering to... But lots of people... You see, the reason I'm asking this is, a lot of people today, I think we almost encourage to feel like victims. <laughs> Tell me about it. Yeah, you know, you, 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 you're a victim of this, you're, you're a victim, victim of, of that, that. That's and, it. and we're going to have to... And, and, and I just worry, and there are genuine victims, of course there are. Yes. Like, well, you were one, but, but there are genuine victims in life. But if we keep telling people they're victims, and the state can help, and the state can provide... It resonates with them. It's a, but isn't that just such a negative mindset? It is. Rather than telling people, you know, stand up, fight back, get your exactly. way out. I mean, life is not a, a place where it's easy. Life is unfair. That's why it's fair. You can't just say, oh, I'm a victim to this, I'm a victim to that, because trust me, Everyone has problems in their life. Mm. Well, this is the interesting thing, isn't it? That the normal problems that people have growing up, and yours were extreme, but the normal difficulties in life, the normal you know, upsets yes. that people have, they're now being encouraged to be thought of <laughs> as being some sort of form of mental illness or trauma, <laughs> when in fact they're the knocks and the ups and downs. of. That's oh, what I feel. I mean, I, Do you see what I'm... Honestly, I, 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 I relate with you, I'm telling you. Because that's it, they say mental health, oh, he has this, he has that. It's just laziness. Yeah. Yes, maybe a few, a fraction of them might have the mental illness mm. or whatever. Some do. But some, some do, do, some yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the majority that lean to that side without having that incident presented in their life. It's, yeah. it's just an... We all have knocks in life. We all have difficulties. Yeah, I mean... We're running out of time. It's been fascinating talking to you. I could you. talk for a lot longer, but I wanted, <laughs> I'm going to give you the last word on this. Just tell us. Tell us, how should we feel about our country? How you should feel about our country is proud. Just keep working and keep believing and keep making, making things possible in a way that if anybody that ventures, that want to dig deep to better themselves, that is not playing the victim can actually make an opportunity of themselves. Just don't surrender and give the opportunity there and then let them work for it. That was Bill Al, State Les Fawaz. And I think that was one of the most uplifting and positive talking pints we've ever done.